Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the home of the Golf Betting Show and the Golf Betting System podcast. We're back with the 2023 RSM Classic. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information and of course please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System. The number one free golf betting resource. I take it that you are well. 2023 RSM Classic, the last PGA Tour event of the year. Firstly, this is going to be my last uh, video before we disappear for the festive period. So thank you for all your support in 2023. Please like the video. That would be great. If we could get to 100 likes I'd really appreciate that. See it as a bit of a Christmas present or an early Christmas present. I hope that you all have a fantastic festive period and New Year. I will be back very, very early in January for the Century Tournament at Kapalua in uh, Kapalua in Hawaii. Right, OK. I'm available at Bamford Golf on X. 100 likes would be fantastic. And why don't you just leave me a message in, a, in the comment section below, even if it's Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Who are you backing this week at the RSM Classic in Georgia, the United States of America? OK, where should we start? Well, let's start with the course, or shall I say courses this week. Don't forget I'm available at Bamford Golf on X. It'd be fantastic as well if you subscribe to the channel. Two courses this week, as we always see at the RSM. They're both on St. Simon's Island in Georgia, even though it's called Sea Island. We won't go down that route. The seaside course is the host course. It's a Colton Allison 1928 original. It had a Fazio Tom redesign in 1998. It's a coastal golf course. Um, I think it's going to play as a mid-score golf course this week. So I would suggest the winning score, 17 to 19 under par. It's short in length. It's a par 70. It's only 7,005 yards in length. 13 of the 18 holes do feature water as a hazard. The fairways are Tifway Bermuda grass with platinum paspalum. The rough is Tifway Bermuda grass, not very thick, two inches. Greens, 7,200 square feet. They are Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. We also have, or the players face, a round, be that the first round on Thursday or the second round on Friday, at the plantation course, which is on the same property, and it's exactly next door. This is a Walter Travis original. It also has had Reese Jones and Davis Love the Third renovations. That last one was in 2019 by DL3. Again, course type coastal. Tree line this golf course. Short. It is a resort scoring course. Uh, Par 72, 7,060 yards. Yes, you've guessed it. 70, par 72, 7,000 yards in length. It's there for the taking. It actually played as the fifth easiest course on the whole of the PGA Tour last year. As ever, though, the scoring here does depend on the weather elements by the sea. And the actual forecast this week looks fairly interesting. We are due to see 20 to 25 mile an hour gusting winds on the Thursday, the opening round. Now, by my logic, and this could be completely and utterly incorrect, the plantation score is, of course, is the course here where you need to go low. Think of it as the north course and south course split at Torrey Pines where they play the farmers every year. Now, if Thursday's playing difficult and you are on the easier scoring course, that to me would mean on a Friday where it's slightly easier with less wind and potentially a soft golf course because as part of the bad weather on Thursday is rain all day, if you're playing the plantation course on the Friday you know, on a soft golf course with less wind, I would have thought you're going to make some very, very low scores. So... 
I might be wrong, but Seaside Plantation, Thursday, Friday split, doesn't appear with this weather forecast to be, for me, on the wrong side of the draw. Let's see how that works out. Uh, it's going to be warmer than 12 months ago. It's going to be 20 to 23 degrees Celsius, 68 to 73 Fahrenheit. Thursday, windy and wet. Friday, 15 miles an hour, nothing too major for these guys. And if that course has been softened, it should be there for the taking. Saturday looks like a moving Saturday for those that make the cut. It's going to be easy scoring conditions, a little bit blustery on Sunday, but nothing to the extent that we're going to see on Thursday. Adding it all together, I genuinely think 18, 19 under for the leader to get the job done this week, as opposed to the 22 unders that we've seen in the past from both Kevin Kisner and from Taylor Gooch in recent renewals. So that's the course, that's the, or course is, that's the agronomy and that is the weather. Key player skills required. Don't forget, we actually, thank the Lord, have got strokes gained data for the last event of the season on the PGO Tour. That, you know, be, be grateful for small mercies on that. But it only covers the seaside course, not the plantation course. So just bear that in mind slightly. Strokes gained, tournament skill averages. Now, I'm going all the way back to Kevin Kisner in 2015. He shot 22 under, as I said. And I just go through the, those that made the cut, where the champions were in relation to those skill sets and averaging it through all of the champions. So Kisner, Mackenzie Hughes, Austin Cook, Charles Howe III, Tyler Duncan, Robert Streb, Taylor Gooch, Adam Svensson. Okay, strokes gained off the T27th. Strokes gained on approach, 18th. Strokes gained around the green, 23rd. T to green, 11th. Strokes gain putting, 9th. Now, that's a rarity, isn't it? Strokes gain T to green, a higher number in terms of where the champions were in the field than strokes gained putting. There aren't many tournaments this year where that tends to happen. However, interestingly enough, the Sony Open is one of them. T to green, 10th, strokes gained putting, 5th. Apart from that, it tends to be T to green over putting. I'm still going. I know this isn't very exciting YouTube content. Quail Hollow is another one. T to green, 10th there, strokes gained putting, 2nd. And that continued again this year with Wyndham Clark picking that one up. So we do need a strong putter this week. Strokes gained off the T in importance, 27th. That is almost as high a number as we see at places like Sony Open again, Pebble Beach, Torrey Pines, the Players, and the Valspar Championship. So off the tee, a uh, Wyndham Championship as well. Driving distance, not really a feature here. Approach play. It's okay, but it's not exceptional as we see some, some uh, a lot of other places where it's single digit. Players literally are having to hit the ball that close to be the winner. So yeah, putters, mate. Putters and players that can hit plenty of greens in that particular week of the victory. Again, I'll go just go through the traditional skill averages. Driving distance 41st. Well, that certainly compares admirably or favourably with that strokes going off the T number. Driving accuracy 18th in bottom. Greens in regulation 10th, vital. Proximity to hole 20th. Scrambling 13th. Putting average 10th. Yet again, putting average and greens in regulation equal importance for the champions here going all the way back to Kevin Kisner. you got to hit fairways. you got to hit greens. And let that warm Bermuda grass positive putter do the rest for you. Predictor model top 10. I ran my predictor model yesterday. I'm recording this Tuesday afternoon. Apologies for my uh, lateness. Um, it wasn't my fault. That's all I'll say. I'll take you through the top 10 of my predictor model. Don't forget golfbettingsystem.co.uk. I have put a link in the description box to this week's predictor. 
There's some great data on there. Who performs best over the last five years on Tom Fazio courses? Who goes well on soft golf courses? That's going to be important potentially from Friday onwards. These courses do drain well, but I reckon you're going to get at least... If it's raining all day Thursday, you're going to get at least the Thursday and the Friday on a soft golf course, probably onto the Saturday as well. There's some win stats on there. Who plays just the best by the coast over the last five years? All available on the predictor model with all of the strokes gained and all of the traditional statistics and the course statistics. It's just all there. Come and use it free of charge. Here's my model. If I mention additional each way places, these are the best prices right now, by the way. Um, all 50 odds. 10 is Denny McCarthy. He's a 40 to 1 shot with Unibet, six places each way for Denny. First appearance since the two, uh, since the BMW Championship. Brian Gay, purely really on the fact that he was a Bermuda grass monster, I'd suggest. 500 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way, also because he's a bloody good putter. 8 is Russell Henley. He is being backed in. He started at 25 to 1 this week. He hasn't played since the Tour Championship. He's 16 to 1 with Bet Fred. Seven is Brian Harmon. He was a runner up here last year. He's part of the Sea Island Mafia. Uh, 18 to 1. Bet 3658 places each way by their each way extra facility. Six is Brendan Todd. 40 to 1 with Bet 3658 places each way. Five last week's winner. It was a joy to see Camillo Vijegas, 60 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Four is Webb Simpson, 90 to 1 with Bet 365, eight places each way via that each way extra facility. Three is Luke List, 50 to 1 with Bet 365, eight places each way. Two is Matt Kuchar, 35 to 1 with Bet 365, eight places each way. And number one is Alex Noren. Could easily have won last week, as a, uh, apart from Camillo, of course. 35 to 1 with Bet365, 8 places each way. What have they got to play for this week? Well, top 125 on the FedEx Cup standings gets you a full or gets you full playing privileges for next year. You can choose your own schedule, apart, of course, from the signature events. Some will be playing even for top 150, 126 through 150. That gives you partial status. So basically, you're going to get into loads and loads of tournaments, but the weaker ones, the ones that the top boys don't want to play. You've got the next 10, uh, 51 to 60. They then get into that top 10, are able to play the Pebble Beach Pro-Am and Tigers event at the Genesis, which are the two big money events early doors on the PGA Tour that they're allowed to qualify for. Uh, the Century is also one of those signature events, but that's qualification only. Uh, and apart from that, of course, you've also got official World Golf Ranking Top 50. If you're in the Top 50 at the turn of the year, you are, even if you haven't won a tournament, you're going to the Masters in 2024. Big, big deals for these players. Quite a few in this field. Just in the top 50, like Eric Cole, JT Post. I think Post and safe. Adam Schenk's pretty safe. There's a few around that mark that are looking over the shoulder, but there's plenty in that 51 through 65 area where a huge week this week could see them into that top 50 for Christmas. I think that's a motivational factor for a lot of players this yeah, and it's no surprise, therefore, that in previous renewals of this, we have seen Sahith Tigala last year, 53rd in the world, entering Sea Island, finished in the each way places at 50 to 1, got him into the world's top 50. The year before that, this whole tournament was a fight between Taylor Gooch and my selection that all year. Mackenzie Hughes at 66 to 1. Gooch was 52nd in the world. Mackenzie Hughes was 50th in the world. So it's a, just a motivational factor that seems to pop in, not every year, but fairly, fairly regular over recent renewals. I like that angle a lot. Rolling eight-week statistics. Now, regulars will know that, of course, we have been overseas on the PJ Tour. There have been no strokes gained data. I can, though, give you strokes gained current form over the last 
eight weeks on both the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour in this field. I'll take you through the top 25 because, of course, we haven't got off the tee all the way through to passing because it hasn't been recorded. But we can work out the strokes gain total because it's basically the final finishing board, leaderboards. Top 25, then, in this field. A tie for 24th, Lanto Griffin and Callum Tarrant. 23rd is Stefan Jaeger. Uh, 22nd was Aaron Rye, but he's withdrawn. 21 is Nicholas Lindheim. 20 is JJ Spawn. 19, Sam Ryder. 18, Mark Hubbard. 17, Ryan Moore. 15 is Chesson Hadley. And he is, or Chad Lee, he's tied with Akshay Bhatia. Top 13, tied for 13th, is Taylor Pendrith and Adam Svensson. 12, Justin Su. 10, tie 4, Chad Ramey and Vincent Whaley. 9 is Davis Thompson. 8 is Luke List. 7, Camillo Vijegas. 6 is Billy Horschel. And yeah, that includes the European efforts that we've been seeing on the DP World Tour. Five is Brendan Todd. Four is Eric Cole. Not many surprises up here, eh? Tie for second, Ludwig Oberg and Matt Kuchar. Number one. I can see a rainbow out the window. J.T. Poston. Poston? Aberg, Kuchar, Cole, Brendan Todd. Just to make you aware, and why not, uh, on my strokes gained numbers, um, it's been pretty, pretty mad. The the total ranks of the winners going back to Sahith Takala, they've all appeared in the top 20 of my strokes gained current form metrics. Takala, 20th. List, 5th. Tom Kim, 5th. Morikawa, 4th. Van Royen, 8th. Vijegas last week was again in the top five strokes gained total. So, if we go off that metric of top ten, the winner's going to be in here somewhere, aren't they? Chad Ramey, Vincent Whaley, not sure about that, maybe Chad. Nine, Davis Thompson, eight, Luke List, seven, Camillo Vijegas, six, Billy Horschel, five, Brendan Todd, four, Eric Cole, two, Ludwig Oberg and Matt Kuchar, number one, JT Poston. Let's see if that's true, shall we? Historic odds of winners. It's an absolute sh show. Svensson 150 to 1 last year. Gooch 40 to 1. Streb 350 to 1. Tyler Duncan 200 to 1. Chucky 3 sticks 50 to 1. Those past five renewals average out at 158 to 1 for the, for the winner of this tournament. If you go all the way back to Heath Slocum in 2010 at 50 to 1, I was actually on him that week. The overall average is 123 to 1. The way I explained this on the Golf Betting System podcast this week was well, what you tend to see here is someone that's well fancied and a kind of 50 to maximum 60 to 6 to 1 chance. They are in with some kind of bolt from the blue, be that a Svensson, a Duncan. Sometimes the better player wins, and sometimes the not-so-good player wins. And that was the case last year. Adam Spencer, 150-1, to 1, pipped joint favourite Brian Harmon, who was 22-1. to 1. It happens. I suppose what we've got to do, and what I've kind of done, is take some of those better players and try and isolate one of those or two of those that we can get into the mix and then just a sprinkle of triple digit numbers that's the way i've gone with this uh just for the record official world golf ranking of winners here 174 Svensson, 52 gooch 380 streb duncan 387 howell 84 cook 302 Everyone's in play this week. Literally everyone is in play. I'm going to take you through my bets. 
Uh, first up, now I will, I will admit, you might read this elsewhere, you might hear this elsewhere. No one who lives on St. Simon's, St. Simon's Island, this golf community, has ever won this event. Came very close last year, though, with Brian Harmon. In this field, by the way, Jonathan Bird, Harris English, Will Gordon, Ben Griffin, Brian Harmon, Zach Johnson, Pat and Kaziah, Pat Matt Kuchar, Keith Mitchell, Andrew Novak, JT Poston, Grayson Sig, and Davis Thompson all live in the community. I've gone for Matt Kuchar. One and a half points each way, 35 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. He is 52nd in the world golf rankings right now. He is so close to being able to get a Masters invite for 2024. I expect he must be excited by that. We know with Kuchar, when you just look at his record, going way, way back, most of his wins, most, the vast majority of his wins, stroke play wins, Bearing in mind, he did win the world match play as well. Come off of very good form and close calls. A bit like Ricky Fowler. Very much like Ricky Fowler. So when I'm seeing Matt Kuchar finishing second in Mexico, I'm interested in him this week. He's in great nick. The course suits. He normally plays this event without the care in the world. I expect he's more... Concerned about the Wiffle Ball Classic on the Wednesday night than he is, or about what he's going to slap on the barbecue for his guests during the week, than he is about the tournament. But this thing, this time, I think he's going to be very, very switched on. Knows the courses intimately. We know that he gets on with these kind of courses by the coast. Short, scorable. He can grind as well. I think he's going to really, really focus this year to get into that world top 50, to make sure he's in the 2024 Masters. It was interesting this year, cast your minds back, he finished third at the Valero, Te Valero Texas Open. He was outside the world's top 50. The only way he could get into the Masters was to win the Valero Texas Open. He came within two shots of Corey Connors, who won that week. He missed his first Masters since 2009 because of that. I don't think he'd want to miss another one. And this tournament this week gives him huge impetus. Win the tournament, you go to the Masters. Finish second or third, likelihood is you're going to be jumping into that world top 50. Likelihood is you're going to be there at the end of the year when it comes to receiving your 2024 Masters invite. So I think he's going to be deadly focused this week. And as we've seen last week with Camillo Vajegas, you can go all the way back to Rose, Kirk, Day, Ricky Fowler, Brian Harmon, Glover. They've all gone through huge... A lot of those golfers, well, they all came off long periods with no wins and got the job done in 2024. Horschel is next up for me. Billy Horschel, one and a half points each way at 40 to 1 with Bet365. I think he's not popular this week. I genuinely think that a lot of people have forgotten the fact that he actually had a decent European campaign. Came over here, 45th at the Irish Open. He was 10th after 54 holes. 18th at Wentworth. He was 12th after 54 holes. 20th at the Open de France and 14th at the Alfred Dunhill Lynx Championship. He was 6th going into that final round on the Monday. So 12th, 10th and 6th going into final rounds and not converting. That doesn't mean it won't. He's a class act. He was also the 54-hole leader at the Wyndham Championship last time he played on the PGA Tour. Is it cracking, Nick? Just hasn't seen the week out. He would, though, love to see the week out this week, in my opinion. Again, he's... 54th in the official world golf rankings. He's fallen out of the top 50 this year. A good week this week saves his bacon, gets him back into the top 50 for the end of year cutoff, gets, in, gets him into the 2024 Masters. So Billy Horschel, who finished second here back in 2016. That was actually uh, the time before last that he's actually played the RSM Classic. So he's clearly targeting the event this week. He's an absolute um, beast on Bermuda grass as well. 
four of his seven PGA Tour victories have come on Bermuda grass greens of TPC Louisiana. There's two there, 2013 and 2018. With, uh, no, I was going to say Ryan Palmer, but it wasn't Ryan Palmer. He's also won the 2014 at East Lake, and he's also won at Austin Country Club, the world match play. Loves his Bermuda grass greens, does Floridian Billy Horschel. Finally, on this angle of top 50, you could, of course, include Lucas Oberg on there. It's the first week I haven't tipped him for a while. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if Oberg jumps into the top 50 this week off of a win at the RSM Classic when I'm not on him. We will find out, won't we? Uh, the other one I've gone for is Brendan Todd. A point each way. I managed to get 50 to 1 on him. Bet 365, 8 place each way. He's back into 40s now. But Todd, that kind of player, again, hits tons and tons of fairways. Often more than not, this year hits plenty of greens, and we just know we told he's a fantastic putter. I put here, he's a real Ireland tour specialist. A real Ireland tour specialist. You look at where he's done well this year. This is just Brendan Todd. Second at Pebble Beach. Second at TPC Deer Run, the John Deere Classic. Seventh at Sedgefield. Sixth at Silverado. Uh, he was second favourite last week heading into the Bermuda Championship. And he was sixth going into the weekend. I just thought he hadn't played since the 40 net. And whether that came and caught up. But anyway, he, he finished in 18th spot. Great week. But, you know, uh, didn't, didn't trouble the each way places. But I think Todd this week, getting the rust off. With, he is in, again, he's in, the I think he's 55th, 56th, something like that. He has a real shot this week with a good performance to get into that world's top 50. So, of the top guys, Kuchar, Horschel and Todd for me. Next up, 55 to 1 with Bet365. Again, eight places each way, a point each way. Davis Thompson, local lad. You uh, Regulars will know I've, I've been backing Davis Thompson for a while. Not really a week to get off on the basis that he's a, clearly a St. Simon's Island guy. His dad is the tournament director. He's got masses and masses of golf course experience here. Uh, he's done very well both here and on the Ocean Forest Golf Club next door. In college golf terms, you just come and read the preview and, and read the finishes. Where was he in my... Uh, where was he in my... Uh, strokes gain, uh, strokes gain total metric. He's sitting there in ninth place between Luke List, Chad Ramey, and Vincent Whaley, ahead of the likes of Justin Sir. So yeah, Davis Thompson. Why not? Then two at triple digits. Matt Neesmith, a half a point each way, 125 to one. We bet three, six, five, eight places each way. Again by their each way extra facility. Had a terrible year, Matt Neesmith. Um, but, in the fall, has found what he does best. He's found the ball striking. 25th at the Sarnison Farms, 42nd at the Shriners Children Open, and 15th last time out at the Zozo Championship at Narashino in Japan. In terms of ball striking, that equated to 4th at the Sarnison, 23rd at the Shriners, and 15th. Fifth, last time out at the Zozo. That is Matt Neesmith down to a T. He is a local lad. He lives in Aiken, South Carolina. He'll be travelling down by car. And he has masses and masses of experience, both here on the seaside course, but also at Next Door Ocean Forest Golf Club. He's got a half-decent record here at the RSM Classic. He finished 14th on his first run around here in 2019. He's finished 15th. He's finished 29th. You might remember last year, he was hot property. Did really well at the Sanderson Farms. I think he was in the top three at the Shriners Children's Opens at Las Vegas. Had another top 10 finish at the Zozo. Came here, 40 to 1, Monday show. Got absolutely hammered. Hammered, hammered, hammered. Missed the cut. No pressure on him this week. No expectations. He's comfortably comfortable in the top 125. But he's just playing better golf. So, yeah, wouldn't be surprised 
for a player I think who's much better on Bermuda grass greens than any other form of agronomy, would not be surprised to see Matt Neesmith have a good week at 125 to 1. And finally, I got 200 to 1, half a point each way, with William Hill, eight places each way of 50 odds, on Robbie Shelton. Now, Robbie Shelton, a four time winner on the Corn Ferry Tour, three of his wins have come in Tennessee, the 2019 Nashville Golf Open. Uh, Tennessee again, the 2019 Knoxville Golf Open. And then in 2022, the BMW Charity Pro-Am in South Carolina. Is that Greer, South Carolina? Loves South East United States golf. That makes sense for a guy that I believe is from Alabama. And just this fall, he's been playing better stuff. 19th at the Fortinet Championship saw him in 8th place going into Sunday. That was then followed up by his best ever finish on the PGA Tour. He finished 4th at the Zozo Championship in Japan last month. Since then, 59th at that WWT Championship they played in Mexico a fortnight Ago. He's in decent nick again, typical, uh, uh, just the same as Davis Thompson, just the same as um, Matt Neesmith. You look at Shelton, decent record on the island, be that the sea, uh, be that on the sea course, seaside course itself. He actually finished third here on the seaside course in the SEC Championship. A feat he, uh, 2014 and 2015. He's finished third on this course at those SEC Championship events. And next door, he's had a, a couple of top 20s at the Ocean Forest Golf Club. He was 10th here last year at the RSM Classic. That featured weekend 65s on Saturday and Sunday that saw him finish 10th. That weekend score which would have been 10 under, was only bettered by Adam Svensson and Brian Harmon. He's a danger at 200 to 1. He's a danger at 150 to 1, his current price, Robbie Shelton. So I've gone for Shelton, Neesmith, Davis Thompson, Brendan Todd, Billy Horschel and Matt Kuchar. I wish you and your families a happy Christmas, a Merry Christmas and a very good new year. Enjoy yourselves. I will be back at the start of 2024 on the Golf Betting Show. Chuck us a like and follow me on X at Bamford Golf. It's been a pleasure.